Hello, hello, hello. This is Fred, your agronomist. And as usual, the farm has already turned into a class. It's a farm, it's a class, and it's a learning center. And uh, today I'm in a new environment. Uh, as you can see the background, you have no, you're not used to see me in this background. Today is a farm visit and uh, training day. And uh, I wanted to share with you the things that I usually share with my farmers. Uh, if you expect me in your farm, what what uh, you expect to, to learn from me uh, so that you can know and be able to learn and uh, get the skills and the necessary knowledge when it comes to watermelon farming. And today I'm with Farmer Tony. I mean, uh, Farmer Tony is uh, among my farmers that I'm working with. And I would like uh, to take him through all the processes or everything that is supposed to be done in this watermelon at this stage, what is supposed to look at, the fertilizers is supposed to, uh, to use, and some chemicals that is supposed to use because these are very critical stage in watermelon farming. Abari Akaton, long time, long time. So today uh, I visited you uh, to see the progress of the crop, and as I can see, the progress, the crop is progressing well. We are at a very critical stage, which is fruiting, as you can see. This is fruiting stage. We are having, we have flowers, and we need to take care of the new shoots. So there is a combination of activities that is supposed to be done here. The first thing, as I've always been telling you, is watering. The frequency of watering. I know this is a question that you've been asking each and every uh, visit that I do. How often you're supposed to water your watermelon? At this stage, and uh, I remind you again, you're supposed to give this watermelon enough water. And how much is enough? Eh? How much is enough water? Now, for you to know uh, that you have enough water, one, this is, because this is the watering this is the watering section. This is where you're supposed to water your watermelon. This is where you usually water your watermelon. We usually check the soil. The soil. As you can see, the soil uh, in this watermelon can make a ball. <coughs> that means the water is enough. The water is readily available for the watermelon. Because we don't have sensors. We, we have not installed sensors in this field. Uh, that will sense when the soil will, is dry so that you can give the watermelon uh, uh, water. So, because also of the, 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 the kind of irrigation we are using, you are not using a uh, drip irrigation where we can just automatically open the water and irrigate. So, we have to make sure each and every time we water, we give it enough water. And this is a good job done. The water is enough. The watermelon is happy. From... The section where we are watering, if you also want to know your watermelon is happy with the amount of water that you have watered, look at these growing tips. These growing tips. When the growing tips are looking up ones, like this one, when they are looking on the upper side, this one they are pointing on the upper side, they are all pointing on the upper side. Know that the water is, uh, is enough for the watermelon. But when these growing tips are drooping on the lower side. No, no, that the uh, the watermelon is lacking water only, as deficiency of water only is in need of water. There are some serious uh, repercussions or the uh, serious effect that comes with uh, lack of water or low water. One is like at this stage when uh, the flowers are setting, when the plant uh, lacks water, it may end up abutting the flowers or it may end up abutting the small fruit so if you fail to, to, to water well you may end up losing the flowers if you lose a flower you lose a fruit if you lose a fruit you have lo already lost the fruit and remember we are in fruit business and we are looking for fruit so make sure watering is uh, is is watered well and you have given enough water another thing the consequence is that a uh, result of lack of water is brosomed rot. As the fruit matures, some fruit may be attacked by brosomed rot, which is uh, brought in by local shamaptic or no cow shamaptic 
or water, lack of water. This is a very uh, uh, dangerous physiological disorder, uh, which uh, if you at this stage play with uh, poor irrigation, it is going to affect your it is going to affect your your watermelon and end up affecting your market. Of course, you are looking for the fruit. Now, from watering, we go to the general uh, look of the fruit. There are some things you need to check out, and these are pests and diseases. Pests, there are several pests that attacks the watermelon. And the first pest that attacks the watermelon at this stage is a red spider mite. Red spider mite is also a very dangerous pest because it destroys the, the leaf and end up transmitting a disease, a virus disease. In most cases, when it's very hot, you may experience the, the tobacco uh, mosaic virus, which at a given point is transmitted by red spider mite. So how do you know uh, the leaves or how do you identify the red spider mite? The red spider mite, if you want to know them, go to the holder leaves. Like for example, these leaves. As you can see, the older leaves, when the leaves are turning yellow on the upside and the yellow, the yellow looks bumpy, like the, this one here, the yellow looks bumpy, just look under the leaf. Look under the leaf and see. As you can see, it's evidence we have red spider mite. If you turn the, 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 the leaf upside down, you can see the web. You can see the small web. And if you want to make sure it's webbing, just take soil, pour it on the leaf, and tap tap the leaf. As you can see, this, there, there are some soils that are held by, the, the, the dust that is held by the webbing. This is an indication that there is red spider mite in these leaves. So, the red spider mite usually attacks from the older leaves going up to the, to the, to the newer leaves. So in order to avoid this, red spider mite is not a very uh, dangerous condition or a dangerous pest. If controlled, uh, you can be able to do it, uh, to deal with it completely. Um, product like, product rich in dynamic, rich in uh, abamectin are good for red spider mite. And among the product is dynamic. You've had dynamic. Dynamic is among the best product. And... You spray this, you prevent it from uh, going upward. In these new leaves, there are no red spider mite. But if you leave it this way, they are going to multiply and go to the, to the upper part. The next pest that you are supposed to avoid is the drips. Uh, in most cases, uh, you don't, the, it's not easy to see the drips, uh, the watermelon drips, but they usually attack on the, on the, on the flowers all. On, the, on this part of the plant. So drips usually eat the flower and affect the developing flower or the fruit that is coming. And once they, uh, they, they damage the fruit, the fruit is not sellable because you are looking uh, uh, for a quality uh, fruit. So another danger of drip is they transmit uh, the so-called uh, uh, mosaic Tobacco mosaic virus, which is a very dangerous disease. So this one we are supposed to control the matokos to make sure the drips are well controlled and there is no drip in your field. Uh, product rich in silodrins can be able to control and do away with drips. The next, uh, the next and the last pest that we look at at this stage, not the last, but last. Uh, the next uh, pest is uh, uh, the, the, the hafids. The hafids usually attack attack the the, 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 the the growing part, the tender stem of the of the of the, of the uh, plant, and they are sucking pests just like other pests. So, uh, at, in your field of gone loud, I've not seen any any uh, hafid. But for you to know your food is affected by aphids, they usually attack the tender uh, part and you'll see the fruit, the, 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 the leaves folding inside or they are folding towards the lower side. That is the aphid that is, is eating uh, your fruit. From the aphid, we go to the most dangerous pest which is 
uh, melon fly. Melon fly, this has been a disaster to all uh, melon uh, uh, farmers. And uh, in this field, I see you have controlled the melon fly very well because as, as, as I can see, the upcoming fruit, the new upcoming fruit are very clean. They have not been affected by any melon fly. The new fruit have not been affected by the, any melon fly. You'll give us the secret, maybe you, you have a secret to, to why you have been able to control uh, the melon fly. And I, that's a very good job. Melon fry can, can be controlled, like I've always been telling you, you can use the traps or you can use the chemicals in order to control the melon fry. As you can see, this one is very clean, very clean, free from melon fry, and that's a very good job. If you continue that, the young fruit here, you know, they are usually attacked at this stage. When they are attacked at this stage, even if when they, they become big, uh, when they become big, uh, they, they are going to show the, the signs and the, the injuries done by the melon fly. Uh, from now the pest, we go to the diseases that may attack the watermelon. And we have uh, two main diseases, which is podale mildew and downy mildew. Podale mildew attacks when it's very hot and dry. With this weather, podale mildew cannot attack us. And it is usually seen on the surface of the leaves of uh, the watermelon. And uh, uh, product leach in azoxystrobin are good to control podal mildew. And downy mildew, like the name suggests, it attacks on the lower part of the leaf. It is caused, it, it, it is usually, it comes when the weather is like uh, the one that we're experiencing today. And it attacks on the lower side, and podal down mildew is caused by humid and cold conditions. And for you to control uh, product with, I've seen product with metalaxyl and mancozeb controlling this product. Also, azoxystrobin and def defeconazole can also be good to, uh, in controlling uh, down uh, podal mildew and down mildew. It's not a big threat when you use the right product and. In most cases, we use preventive more than a curative product. From the disease, we go to the last bit, which is the nutrition of the of this. Uh, just to take you through, just to take you through how it started and how you're supposed to, to do the nutrition during planting, because this has been a, a question, a very big question. During planting, we start with uh, a phosphorus rich fertilizer. And among an example of phosphorus rich fertilizer, one is DAP, another one is Yara, wind, Yara uh, uh, Power. Uh, from there, we go to top dressing. I usually do a top dress of 23-23. And uh, after 23-23, at vegetative stage, I do uh, a, a, a top, another top dress of Yara River Nitrable. This is at flowering stage when flowers start showing and at fruiting stage. Then from that stage to this stage that we are now, we can now come and combine uh, Yara liver nitrable again because of the continuity of fruit formation because of the of the of the uh, of the of the boron inside it, and also because of the calcium inside it for root development and also for uh, crop development. From there, we come to uh, we combine with Yara winner Yara winner with its good trace element and uh, rich in potassium, also very good at ripening, increasing the fruit size, and also making the fruit uh, to be sweet. Uh, in some areas, like there are some areas in Kenya which doesn't need a lot of potassium, so you just need a small percentage of uh, this product, but for boron and calcium you need quite a good percentage. I usually do 10 grams per each application and that is what I use, uh, the, the amount I work with my farmers. I hope you've learned something from our today's class or from our today's farm visit. If you have not uh, uh, followed me, check my social media at Farm with Fred uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok at Farm with Fred, on Instagram at Farm with Fred. Follow my uh, social media. Check my WhatsApp number. It, it, I have a, a button of 
my WhatsApp number on my Facebook page at Farm with Fred so that we can continue communicating. Leave a comment on this uh, video so that we can uh, continue engaging and if you have any question so that I can be able to answer you. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so we can continue learning together. Bye.